Hi, I am Ali Ibrahim. And my name is Sahib Yunus. Greetings. My name is Faisal Muhammad. Hello, my name is Hussein Hamid. Hi, I am Muhammad Al Ghanim. This video will demonstrate how the change in depth will affect the pressure. When going out to the beach or the swimming pool, we feel relaxed when we are swimming near the surface of the water. However, when we decide to dive deeper in the water, we start experiencing some discomfort in our ears. And the deeper we dive, the more the pain increases. Where does that feel of soreness come from? We will conduct an experiment to understand what the cause of this pain is. By creating a visual representation of what happens to fluids at the deeper level. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and we hope you enjoy it. We have to prepare several different tools and equipment before conducting this experiment. We need a large water jug that is open from the top to easily fill it with water. A cordless drill with a regular drill bit as well as a hole saw attachment to create holes in the jug. A file and a box cutter to adjust the finishing of the holes. Four small pieces of a quarter inch PVC piping for connections between the jug and the balloons. Two quarter inch ball valves to control the flow. 2 quarter inch PVC unions to connect the piping to the jug. An adjustable wrench to attach the piping to the valves. PTFE tape to avoid leakage. Leak proof tape to attach the balloons to the pipes. Food coloring to add to the water to make it more visible. A ruler and a vernier caliper to take measurements. And finally, two balloons. Initially, we had to mark two points on the jug to drill holes for the piping. We used a ruler to determine the distance between the two holes and marked them. Next, we started the drilling process. First, we drilled a small hole as a guide. Then we used the hole saw attachment to cut out a hole of the desired size. We made sure the hole is slightly smaller than our connection as to have an interference fit and avoid any water leakage. Using a file and a box cutter, we increased the hole size slightly so that the connections would properly fit. We rolled PTFE tape around the union's threading to ensure no leakage, then inserted it into the hole and closed the cap from the inside of the jug to hold it tight. After that, it was time to connect the PVC pipes. We first connected two pipes on each side of the ball valve, where one side will be connected to the jug through the union, and the other will have the balloon attached to it. Now we connect the pipe to the union in the jug. All the piping connections have been completed and we made sure that all the valves are closed. The setup is now ready for testing. We filled the jug with water, ensuring the water level is above both holes. And we added some red food coloring to make sure the water is more visible. We blew up the balloons roughly the same size and attached them to the open-ended side of the pipes. We opened the top valve and this is what we saw. We observed that the balloon was getting smaller and the air is being released in the form of bubbles from the top of the jug, meaning the pressure of the air in the balloon is higher than the pressure of the water at that level. Now we opened the bottom valve and noticed something different. No air bubbles formed, however, water started entering the balloon causing it to expand meaning that the pressure of the water at that level is higher than the pressure of the air in the balloon. Therefore, it can be deduced that there must be a proportional relationship between the change in pressure of fluids relative to the change of depth, since with the increase in depth, there was an increase in pressure.
this is the theoretical explanation behind the experiment that has been conducted. We will start off with our four basic equations. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Rho, which is density, is equal to the mass divided by volume. Pressure is equal to force over area. And in our case, volume is equal to area times height. We start with the first equation. We can replace air acceleration with gravity as there is no other force or no other source of acceleration other than gravity in our experiment. A is equal to G. Therefore, the force is equal to the mass times gravity. Then we can say that mass is equal to rho times V by just changing the density equation. Therefore, we can replace mass in the force equation and it will become force is equal to rho, which is density, times volume, times gravity. Then we can replace force with pressure times area from this equation. If we change it around, we will get pressure times area. If we replace force is equal to rho, which is density, times volume, times gravity. And we also know that volume is equal to, in our case, area times height. So therefore, we can replace the volume here with area times height and we will get pressure times area is equal to the density times area times height times G. We cancel the area on both sides and we come to this final equation, which says pressure is equal to rho, which is density times height or depth times gravity. Therefore, we can see a direct relationship between the depth and the pressure when all others are constant, where in our case, the density was the density of water and the fluid has not changed and gravity is always constant here on Earth. Using the following values for gravity and the, uh, and the density of water, we will calculate the pressure we received at P1, which is at the top of our, the top balloon, which is near the surface of the water. And then we will try it with 25 centimeters, which is the deeper part of the balloon. We will use 9.81 for gravity, and we will use 1000 kilograms per meter cubed for water for density. Height one is two centimeters. Height two is 25 centimeters. So for pressure one, P1, we will start with the same equation, rho times G times H, which is 1000 the density of water times 9.81 times 2 over 100 as we need to change this unit to meters. So it's 2 centimeters over 100 making it 2 over 100 meters giving us a final value of 196.2 pascals. This is the pressure at P1. Now for the pressure at P2 same equation it's going to be rho which is the density times gravity times H2 in this case the 1000 density of water times 9.81 times 25 centimeters. So we have to change it to meters. It will be 25 divided by 100. Therefore, the final answer is 2452.5 pascals for P2. As we can see, there is a huge difference between these two values of pressure. And the only changing variable here is height. Therefore, we can conclude by saying that when height changes or the depth changes and the density is constant, meaning the liquid does not change or does not have a change in density, the pressure will proportionally change with the depth. Meaning, if depth is increased, the pressure will increase. If the depth is reduced, the pressure is reduced. Of course, the pressures here, P1 and P2 calculated, are only the gauge pressure. We did not consider the atmospheric pressure coming from the atmosphere outside. But since we are only comparing the difference between P1 and P2 internally, we do not have to consider the atmospheric pressure as it is common between both. We can finally answer the question why we feel pain in our ears when we dive deeper into water. As depth increases, the pressure as well increases. That's why when we are swimming near the surface, the pressure in our ears is much lower and we do not feel any discomfort or pain. But the deeper we dive, 
the more the discomfort increases in our ear, eventually leading to excruciating pain. I would like to sincerely thank my team for their dedication to this project, as well as their commitment in helping make this recording. We learned a great deal from conducting this experiment and had a lot of fun along the way. We hope you enjoyed this video.